conclude with the words of Susan Travers, who was the first female engineer, and the only female engineer from the French Legion, uh, who served in the Second World War, um, and who was the driver of General König, who was the general leading um, the Free French and the Legion, uh, during the outbreak of uh, Bir Hakaim. She said, this is why I came here, to feel what it's like to be a man in the heat of battle. Why not? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the great presentation, for the messages we got from your presentation. And I already feel inspired to work more on this issue, and I'm sure we from Montenegro American and Alumni Association, as well as the Atlantic Club, uh, will take some of your messages and make a new workshop and make a new uh, thematic and training on how to improve uh, the role of women. Now I'm going to uh, give the floor to uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Nevena Atanasova, who is the Associate Professor at the National Military University, Vasilevsky, in Bulgaria. <laughs> Thank you, Milan. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. First, it's really a pleasure for me, not only honor, to be here with so many wonderful people, men and women together, because it means really a lot that we are together for our common goals, to discuss, to communicate, to change something maybe in the future. Uh, because I'd like to share some of the Bulgarian experience uh, according to gender issues, according to gender equality or gender perspectives. But first I'd like just to say some words about me, because I'm the last in this panel, and there is no excellent things. In my presentations, I'm about some of the ideas that you both mentioned in your presentations. In your presentations. That's why I hope to be useful like a team, and to be a good example for the next panels, of course. And on the next, uh, on the other side, I'd like to, to share that um, we are most uh, of us here, we are women, women. And this is a bit dangerous because we like to speak a lot. <laughs> and it is scientifically proved that if one woman wants to be happy, she needs to speak at least seven, eight thousand words per day. Please, it's scientifically proof, believe me. I'm a lecturer in National Military University and I'm a psychologist, believe me, this is real true. To compare with our men, please don't don't offend. Please. We only need five thousand. Right? No, you need approximately two or three thousand words per day, but it depends on your job. If you are an engineer or computer all day. Five. Active vocabulary maybe 200, 300, maybe. We'll be happy with it. Yes, <laughs> it's enough for them. That's why, to be clear and to be respectable to your time, because uh, for sure we, we arrived all of us today, and uh, I will follow my notes that uh, with the aim to promise you that you will have dinner this evening. And that's why I would like to try to start with my presentation, yes, <laughs> succeed, yes. Okay, as a good lecturer and a good teacher in National Military University, I prepare my contents, some of the basic issues that I involved in my, in my two hours lecture. Do you agree with me? Two hours, do you have so many times? Okay, Milan? Okay. okay. But first, I would like to say thank you to all of you, dear colleagues, dear friends, I think. Because seeing you here today, I am pleased of our common efforts and of our common energy. Because it is very important to be together with unity of purpose and unity of actions. It means that I am confident by working together, we will really achieve some way in our desired positions and directions. Okay, I would like to start with one very famous sentence and a very popular 
The world of humanity has two wings. One is woman and the other man. Should one wing remain weak, flight is impossible. With only these couple of words, we can explain all the humanity that men and women, we are part of one common thing. We are created to be together. That's why I would like to mention some couple of words about the equity of men and women in the world because unfortunately there are still existing stereotypes as you mentioned and as you mentioned not only in men brains and in women brains too. Because equality of women and men is not only of condition whose effects will be limited to half on the world's population. And it means that its operalizations will affect to all people in the world. That's why when we discuss about this issue, we have to discuss about the implications for society. I mean that the equality of women and men is a facet of human reality and not just the conditions to be achieved for the common good. That which makes human beings human, their internal dignity and nobility is neither male or female. The search for meaning, for purpose, for community, the capacity to love, to create, to hate, has no gender. This has profound implications for the organizations of every aspect of human society. Woman. Okay, okay. Woman can live with dignity and with freedom from poorness and from fear. Gender equality is also a precondition for advancing development and reducing poverty. Empowered women contribute to the health and productivity of whole families and communities, and they improve prospects for the next generations because we have to be responsible for the next generations, for the young people who will be in the future people who will be responsible for the, our security, not only national or the Balkans of European, for the security in the world. In that position, gender equality is not a condition for achieving the goals of future organization, the presence and opportunity for social cohesion. In the last 10 years, different practices shown that the investing in policies for gender equality has proven like a uh, successful solutions to all and new problems and challenges. Therefore, when we're anal analyzing the content of a number of international documents, for example, United Nations resolutions and national strategies and plans for their implementations, we can make conclusion that the policies for gender equality can and should be understood as a long-term investment, not as a sweet a temporary decision or short-term costs. In that case, in the context of armed forces, where the working environment is sexually mixed, it is particularly important that both women and men feel engaged in gender issues and be convinced of their benefits for the society as a whole of efficient gender equality policies. For Future progress in this area, an important role is in changing of the still existing negative stereotypes and attitudes have education, media, and entire government with their decisions and policies. Unfortunately, gender stereotypes in society continue to persist and to transmit through modern education and culture. Women and men usually fall and fall into defined traditional models of education that actually lead to great opportunities for women in areas with lower wages and salaries. That's why it's necessary to encourage young men and women to choose a non-traditional routes or areas in their educational development. That's why armed forces is really proper for these young people. And the service in the armed forces of the Republic of Bulgaria is a good example to the entry of female soldiers in the recently poorly male territory of the Bulgarian army. 
Of course, in Bulgaria we have national plan for implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 3025. In the Ministry of Defense it was adopted in 2011. And the plan for this implementation in the Ministry of Defense sent a strong political signal to the Bulgarian and international community about the priorities of the management of the Ministry of Defense and in the armed forces to the implementation of the Euro-Atlantic policies in this area. I would like to mention some of the, our policies and successful lessons from these last years. On a national level, the body for consultation, cooperation and coordination among the government and non-government bodies in the elaboration of realization of the national policy of gender equality is the National Council of Gender Equality under the Council of Ministers. It's very important for us that the Deputy Defense Minister in Bulgarian Ministry of Defense is a member of this National Council for Gender. The Council of Ministers adopt an annual national plan for promotion of gender equality. This plan for the implementation of Resolution 3025 of the United Nations Security Council was deployed jointly with the Bulgarian Armed Force Women Associations. It is really very uh, proud of me because I was uh, one of the creators of this non-government organization 10 years ago because Bulgarian Armed Forces Women Association was has created in 2006 as non-government organizations with the missions to promote, to create, to endorse the prestige and social status of women in Bulgarian Armed Forces. Another very important thing about the future generations, about the people who are coming after us. This is uh, another purpose and uh, durations in this national plan. It means removal of the informal restrictions for women in professional fields, major specializations, degrees and forms of education, in applying for bachelor degree in military field with professional qualification officers. I'm really proud to share with you that this is already a fact. We don't have quota in Bulgarian army for men or well, for male or female. There isn't quota for men and women in military academies with accepting them for cadets. In the last three, four years, the trainees and future officers are classified on the basis of their results achieved in candidate exams and both sexes receive equal opportunity for development and future expressions only due to their qualities. On the next slide you can see the number of male and female cadets now in Bulgaria in uh, the future officers. As you can see, more than 20% you can see in the last number, more than 20% they are female cadets in Bulgaria, they will be the future officers and without any difference between men and women in our military academies. Very important part of the national plan about the implementation of the United Nations resolutions is that we have to prepare some specific materials, we have to develop materials books, manuals, lectures, and whatever standard of conduct for the implementations of different resolutions in order to integrate the policy of equality in each orient aspect of armed forces. That's why we offered and uh, we organized and we arranged education of gender issues in the Bulgarian military academies from the previous year according to package of the training and education tools which is offered on the site of the SACTIF NETO, we prepare our national special documents and because I'm like a lecturer in National Military Academy, like psychologist, I'm responsible for leadership preparations. I succeed with my small battle with uh, my superiors in National Military University and of course in Ministry of Defense with changing the leadership program and we succeed to involve some gender issues in our leadership preparation, theoretical and practical. That's why we have new 
do leadership programs in our four modules, in our four parts, which are organized by lecture, by workshops, exercise, and uh, this is uh, one of the uh, lectures with my cadets, uh, which are very interesting because uh, for my, uh, I was surprised really because in the first classes, uh, male cadets were more um, demonstrated their stereotypes, not female. And it was really a pity because, I mean, this is young people, this is 20, 21 years old uh, boys, and they don't want to continue to be part of this army because of the family environment, because of the some not so good, not so good examples in their education or whatever. And it is really interesting to motivate, to explain and to realize that this is the future. To be together because we are professionals, doesn't matter of our sex. About the, some other our good policies, I would like to, to share, of course, some other things that happened in the Bulgarian Army, the National Assembly.